Welcome back to the Saints and Alumni Show right here on WVCR, A Day Playing Through the Saint. I'm your host this week, Brandon Murphy, class of 2017. And you all know by now I'm from the Alumni Engagement Office. And this week I am joined by Kristen Bromley, also from the class of 2017, Assistant Executive Director at First Tee in Western New York. Today we're talking about her Siena experience and how that has shaped her path after commencement and since joining First Tee. A reminder to everyone listening today that here on WBCR AWP site is the hub of the podcast, but you can also listen to Apple, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and then subscribe to the alumni YouTube channel to check out the complete selection of shows. Kristen, I know we featured you once or twice already on social media, but we're so excited to have you today and talk kind of more in depth and more elaborate on your CN experience and everything you do at First Tee. Uh, so officially, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? Good. Thank you so much for having me. It's exciting to catch up and uh, yeah, just talk about all things Sienna and First Tee. And it's one of my favorite things about the job is to sit down with everybody and kind of hear everyone's unique Sienna story. And I know that all of the listeners also enjoy to hear all the unique different Sienna stories and perspectives and timelines that we do share on this podcast. And it's not every day that we get to sit down and speak with uh, previous Division One athletes. You know, we, a lot of the time we have that generic, I looked at Siena, I went to Siena, I did X, Y, and Z studying, and then I went on and had my job. But you had a little bit different of a, of a pathway to Siena because you had, you know, what I wish I had was, was the golf talent. Um, so you actually got recruited to come and play Division One golf at Siena. So as a tradition on the show, so our listeners can kind of get to know each guest, can we take the clock backs a little bit right now to begin? And can you share with the listeners uh, how you ended up at Siena and at the angle of the recruiting process and why you ultimately decided to be a Siena Saint? Yeah, definitely. So obviously the top priority when I was a junior and senior in high school is I knew I wanted to play college golf. Um, obviously being a golfer and having that seasonality component, I was really driven to want to go down south. Um, so I was not really considering um, any like Northeastern school or a school in New York. So um, I had got connected with Coach Ranowski and he was like, hey, we're interested, would love to have you come to Siena. And I stepped foot on campus and all of a sudden my mindset completely shifted um, from just meeting the team, the coaches, seeing the facilities. And then there was also that element of opportunity to get engaged. And that was something um, I didn't really know I wanted. I was really involved in high school in a lot of different ways outside of golf. Um, so it just seems kind of like a natural fit when I first visited campus. We actually had Ryan Oliver on uh, the podcast yeah, previously yeah. as well, and he had talked about, you know, he had like 250 hours of community service prior to coming to Siena. So it's always great when we can have a student athlete at Siena and balance that social life, that community service Franciscan aspect, and then the athletic side of things. So I first kind of want to jump to your social aspect of being a Siena Saint. Uh, you know, I talk a lot to the enrollment marketing team and the admissions team, and they talk about how interconnected future Saints can already be through group chats, social media, but even 10 years ago for us, it was a little bit different. You know, we had the Facebook group and we were kind of messaging people, putting out feelers. And a lot of the times people might think, hey, athletes are going to room with athletes. Athletes are going to be friends with athletes. But you actually went out to Facebook and you kind of you know, put out some feelers yourself and ended up rooming with somebody that was not on the golf team. Can you talk about, you know, coming into freshman year, selecting a roommate in some of those first few weeks on campus? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So like you said, um, I feel like everyone in our class, we all kind of became friends before we even met each other in person. Um, so I had chatted a little bit with my freshman year roommate, Gabby, um, in our hall in Ryan for North. We just had the best hallway, it seemed like um actually one of the girls that lived across the hall from me is getting married in September in it and I'm in her wedding so that's going to be um a lot of fun but yeah like you said um our coach was really big on encouraging us to room with non uh golfers just because especially with golf we travel so much and we're such a small team um that he was a huge proponent and allowing us to you know just meet other people outside of golf and athletics um i was really fortunate my other teammate who was the senior staff she was still in the same building on the same floor just in a different hallway um so she was able to kind of form her friends and um i was able to kind of get really close with my hall and ever like our whole floor became really close so 
um, yeah, it was really cool to kind of have that all work out. And here we are, like you said, 10, 10 years later and a lot of people getting engaged, getting married. And it's fun that we are still able to be connected. And there's something about Ryan's Hall and Plasman Hall. You know, I lived in Heinz, nothing against Heinz, but it seems like Ryan and Plasman, they have this special bond when you're going through it and you're living together in those doubles on campus. And that's just seems to be a little bit tighter of a bond than Heinz. And actually, when I went to Plasman, you know, my best friends and I lived in Plasman. So it's something about those two buildings on campus that people love. And you hinted at a little bit about your coach, uh, Dave Ronowski, uh, who's entering his 18th season as the women's head golf coach. And, and getting his athletes to have that full Siena experience. And you had a pretty full experience, a lot of balance between DSP and orientation leader and class council. What were some of your favorite memories uh, outside of golf with those three organizations and clubs? Yeah, I think with DSP, it was a lot of fun because, um, again, even some of my friends that I met through that remain to be some of my closest friends today um, because we were all business majors. Obviously, you know, as you get older, junior, senior, and you kind of get to specialize and get into the more advanced classes, it was nice to be able to take the business um, component of it and e be able to, you know, kind of create friendships and then also start to look at your life. Uh, beyond Siena. So that like networking, that business development. Um, so BSP was awesome. Definitely would recommend any business major to get involved with that. Um, class council was great too. And then when we did the 21 club um, for the Siena basketball games, that was always fun and uh, got to encourage a lot of our friends from, you know, different friend groups um, kind of all came together. And as you know, our class was really, really <laughs> awesome. Um, and then Saint, being a saint was one of my favorite weeks on campus. Again, being able to connect and really form friendships with um, people that weren't necessarily in like my uh, main friend group from, you know, living quarters or from the golf team or whatever. Um, it was just a really great way to, to reach out, make those friendships, but then also know that we were equally as excited to bring the new freshman class, um, you know, when we wanted to share our stories because we had such a positive freshman year experience. And for those that, that, that don't know uh, the, the Saints, it's students assisting in new transitions at Siena. And since our time in 2017, the college has really enhanced that program. Uh, they're, they're making a new Saints camp in July, and they're also providing these Siena preview days uh, every Monday in the month of August uh, to allow incoming freshmen to experience Siena before freshman move-in day. Uh, so it's great for our listeners to kind of continue to see the growth of, of that program. Um, and before we transition into golf for the last five minutes of the, of this segment, uh, you were fortunate enough to have a abroad trip uh, and study abroad in Siena, Italy. Not something that a lot of athletes can do at Siena because of their schedules. Can you talk about your experience in Siena, Italy and, and why you chose to do a, a summer term over there? Absolutely. So with the golf teams, we obviously have a fall season and then a spring season. Um, so when you look at study abroad options, that additional semester is completely out of the question. Um, luckily, Coach Ranowski was, again, very big into us having a full college experience. And that meant from, you know, trying to study abroad if we could, to meeting other people, to getting involved. So um, it was a four-week program, and I was able to go um, it was like mid July to early August. So it was actually nice because I was still able to uh, play in a couple tournaments over the summer that happened before I left. And then when I came back, so even though I did take a, a four week break from golf, I didn't play any golf over there. Um, just the cultural immersion and being able to stay with a host family. And I actually went with two other people from Siena. Um, one was on the men's golf team. So that was great. Um, and then another girl from Siena was able to form um, we all worked close over there and, and that was a lot of fun. So it was a really unique thing to have an athlete or two athletes, I guess, um, study abroad. And the fact that Sienna offers that summer session does make it even more inclusive for those, you know, that maybe don't want to spend a so full semester or those that are tied up with athletics or other commitments that they can um, take a full semester abroad. That was my biggest regret at Siena was not studying abroad. So I'm so glad that as an athlete, you got that opportunity. And I think we made our listeners wait long enough about the athletic side of you being a Siena Saint. 
Uh, so I want to dive into the golf, uh, you know, in the next three to four minutes uh, before you do have to cut to a commercial break um, and just kind of go over your, your college path with that. You know, in your freshman year, you placed top 25 at the St. John's Invitational uh, in October, only a few weeks into, into being a, a Siena student um, and then helped lead the team to, to a top 10 finish in the MAC championships. Um, something I, I I could never do. You know, I could barely shoot under 100. Uh, so it's great to see that skill set at such an early age. So can you give our listeners today a little bit of insight on college golf um, and some of your favorite memories while playing golf at Siena? Yeah, absolutely. So I will say I think golf, especially in the college sector, has changed substantially over the last 10 years. I just think it's increased in a lot of popularity. Um, but really the formatting was the same, I would say back then as it was now. So um, we would go to a tournament, we would typically leave a day early that the tournament would actually start and we'd get a practice round in. Um, and then most of our tournaments was 36 holes. Some days we did play um, 54 holes with 36 and then 18 on the, the following day. So there are some days we were completely exhausted. Um, but yeah, it was, it was really nice that, you know, as freshmen, both Steph and I, um, coach was able to give us both a chance at traveling, what it's like to be, um, you know, collegiate golfers. And he really believed in us from the start. So, um, it was exciting to just kind of get plugged in there. And, um, you know, I, like you said, I ended up playing pretty well that fall season and, um, things just kind of continued to progress. So it was exciting. And when you've placed in the MAC championships uh, in the top 10, you also had the opportunity to go out to the Midwest um, and play at some of the elite golf courses. What were some of your favorite golf courses to play? Maybe some of the most challenging teams that you faced uh, that, that you had throughout your years at Siena? Yeah, definitely. We got to play Karsten Creek, which is Oklahoma State's um, course. So for those that are into golf, like Ricky Fowler went to Oklahoma State, Victor Hovland, and they have like one of the nicest clubhouses and honestly the best like public golf course um, in America. It's been rated pretty substantially. So it was a lot different going out there and seeing, you know, girls that were going on and already, you know, thinking about their LPGA and their professional golf experience. So so when we went out there, we were really lucky again, just to be led by coach Ranowski to have that mindset of, you know, probably aren't going to win this thing, but still give it our best. And, and it was such a positive experience. Um, again, that the golf was not our best showing, um, as a team or individually, but at the end of the day, we were really lucky to all be there together and really have that experience of, of playing against some of the top, um, girls and many of them are really succeeding on the LPGA tour, which is awesome to see. And you hinted at it a little bit, but we do have to cut to a commercial break right now on the radio. Uh, and you talked about the, the golf courses that you got to play at. And actually after your time at Siena, you went to Ireland with your Siena family. And then you also were over there for a year after Siena. So we're going to begin segment two by talking about some of those experiences, some of those golf courses, and then all of the work that you do at First Tee. Stay with us. We'll be right back here on WVCR. Eight eight through the Saint. Welcome back to the Saints and Alumni Show right here on WBCR Eight Eight Point Through the Saint. I'm your host this week, Brandon Murphy, class of 2017 from the Alumni Engagement Office. And this week, I am joined by Kristen Bromley, class of 2017 as well, the Assistant Executive Director at First Tee Western New York. We just wrapped up talking about her Siena experience. And before we kind of dive into First Tee, her work at First Tee, and the mission of First Tee, I want to just conclude with one last CN experience that you had, and that I believe was the summer after commencement, where you traveled to Ireland with the Siena golf team. Can you share a little bit to the audience today how that trip came about, and, and what that trip was going to do for you and the team? So uh, Coach Ranowski, um, his father, my first two years was the men's coach. So when we were coming in as freshmen, um, I remember getting to campus and the team was just talking about their trip that they took to Scotland. Um, coach Ranowski and really like everyone in the, the golf athletic department thought it was really important to, again, be immersed into, you know, a world-class golf trip, um, and you, it doesn't get much better than going over to Ireland so close to where golf was started in Scotland. Um, so we played, oh gosh, I don't even know how many courses we played. I think we played four or five co courses. We were there for seven days, uh, and we just had the best time. It was 
we got off the plane and we immediately were traveling to our first course, which was great. And we got to play uh, some of the best courses in the world. Um, and especially for Steph, myself, Scott and Matt, who were all just graduated, it was a really nice capstone to our four years at Siena. And it was exciting to see um, the freshmen that we got to spend a year with them get really excited for their next three years at Siena. And it was like you said, it was, you know, our Siena golf family we got to travel with and all of our families came to and it was just uh, a once in a lifetime experience. It was a lot of fun. For those listening on the radio today and even watching here on the YouTube channel, you can't see the island frame that I have uh, from the uh, the open uh, in Royal Port Rush. Um, and when I was over there, I was like, oh, I, I could live there. You know, this is this is my place to be. Golf, Ireland, Northern Ireland, Scotland. Uh, and you actually made that decision uh, for a year uh, to continue to live abroad uh, in Europe um, and to continue golf and to continue your professional development. Can you talk a little bit about why you made that decision and the job and the roles that you had while living abroad? I did. Yeah. So I actually knew and I had committed to being a victory scholar of the Sport Changes Life Foundation. And actually, I know uh, Ryan Oliver from the basketball team, he was on a recent episode and he did the program a year prior to I did. And then Meg Donahue, who was on the basketball team, she also went over. So when we were over with the team in Ireland, I knew I was um, going over to spend a year there, but I did kind of have to keep it a secret because they wanted to do their social media announcement and everything. But finally, I was just like, guys, cat's out of the bag. I'm so excited. This is like, my kickoff to spending a whole year abroad. So yeah, it was through the Sport Changes Life Foundation. And um, to this day, you know, I, I remain in touch with the people that I lived with that were in the program, and then also the, the founders and the executives out there. And it was uh, a, an amazing experience um, that really helped cultivate, you know, that community giving of, you know, what Sienna's, Sienna Cultures is about. Um, I was able to take for a full year over there. And you were over there for a full year, um, and then you made the decision to come back stateside. Uh, and you kind of were probably telling yourself, you know, I love the community development, I love golf, and I love this type of professional path. Uh, so you eventually ended up getting involved uh, with First Tee out in Western Europe, which is really, I believe, is a national organization uh, mm -hmm. in the country. So can you kind of talk a little bit about how you discovered First Tee and the mission that First Tee has with golf and community development? So I was actually working at one of the, our local country clubs here. I was doing their membership in marketing and it was a role that was great and it was a good developmental role, but it just was a little bit more further removed from the golf side of things than I wanted. And um, I had actually inquired to uh, First Tee Western New York to volunteer with them and they actually were expanding into the Rochester area. So it was a really nice fit. Um, but again, being able to combine my interest and my love for golf while also being able to give that back to the community and working with kids. That was something that really transformed when I was over in Ireland. So it was kind of like, you know, all the, all the dominoes, um, fell very perfectly. And, um, that was in 2019 and I've been with Bursty Western York ever since. And you talk about working with the community, working with the kids and first T, from my understanding, kind of works and, and operates in this three-tier three system uh, for community development and fundraising that kind of branches off one another and helps everyone and the overall mission of first T. Can you expand on some of the initiatives of first T and, and how that supports the mission of, of the organization? Absolutely. So really the mission of First Tee is to impact um, lives of young people by teaching them character education. And we do that by teaching the game of golf. So we have our on-course program and a lot of golf fans, um, because First Tee is the nonprofit of the PGA Tour, if you're watching the Players' Championship or even this past weekend, the Waste Management Open, um, you know, First Tee is often promoted on their channels. And a lot of times it is the on-course program. So in Western New York, we had about 16 100 kids in that program last year um, at 13 different golf courses. And then our outreach is really involved with working with schools and community organizations. And that is like very um, grassroots being able to go into schools and even title one schools, right? So these are schools um, that have lower socioeconomic um, demographic of students and being able to give them a chance to learn and be exposed to the game of golf. Um, 
And that, again, the outreach is comprised of our school and community program. So from there, we're then able to kind of go into a school, introduce kids to golf, pick up, really identify the kids that are interested, um, and then be able to bring them to that on-course program. So it's been it's been a really um, positive for the kids, but it's also positive for the coaches, the staff, and our community partners as well. And we've began to paint this big picture of First Tee and kind of narrowed it down to the branches of the three initiatives. So people might be wondering, listening today, what is your role at First Tee um, as the Assistant Executive Director and kind of what is your day-to-day -day responsibilities to achieve that mission? Yeah, so in uh, the not-profit, non-for-profit world, um, I definitely wear a lot of different hats, but as Assistant Executive Director, my roles really change based on our season. So for example, in the summer, that's our busiest time where we're running programming. So not only am I responsible um, for helping our ED with fundraising and administrative and business development stuff, but I also have that focus on making sure that our coaches and our site coordinators out in Rochester have all the materials that they need to actually work with the kids. Um, Again, going back to that outreach component, uh, a lot of connect, um, community connections and engagement with schools, community organizations, and then um, obviously that ties into a lot of different networking with donors and sponsors. And honestly, that's probably my favorite part of the job is being able to meet with a lot of different people, especially Rochester. Um, you know, we truly are a golf town out here. So it's always fun to meet someone and their interest is very heavily um, related to golf. So being able to kind of bring them in and then let them know what we do a little bit. It's been uh, a lot of fun and impactful, um, just how much this, the game of golf can connect a lot of different people. And we had talked a little bit about it in the pre-interview about, you know, alumni our age, 27, 28, 29, you know, maybe they don't always love their job as much as they thought they would. You're the complete opposite of that. You love your job. You love going in every single day. And I think our listeners are understanding that you probably come home and you feel like you made a difference to somebody or to a community. Um, and I know you've only been there since 2019, but you hinted at some of your favorite parts of the job. Um, is there one event, you know, one, you know, success story, one community development initiative that either stands out to you or something that you look forward to, you know, every April, this is going to happen. And I love working on this project with First Tee. Yeah, there's so many, like one stories that the program has really impacted um, a lot of different kids. And I think from a very generic perspective, I think my favorite thing is seeing kids that are really shy or they're just not sure of themselves or they don't really have that confidence, um, you know, week one and then by the end of the seven week program, they are so excited. They're a completely different person. Mom, dad, grandpa, grandpa, whoever it is that's at home with them sees a difference in their overall like character development. Um, and I'll share a quick story too. We had uh, one of our junior participants, he had a, a really tough time at home and just wasn't in the best home home life. He got involved in the program um, and then we were able to kind of put him um, as a junior coach. And he grew through work experience and like his grandfather said that was the best thing to ever happen to him so um things like that where we're able to to really take kids and not only expose them to the game of golf but allow them to develop as people um that's definitely the my favorite part of the job and we have about three minutes left in the show today i want to again thank you for joining us and sharing this sienna story and kind of wrap up with uh, with some of these two final questions and and you hinted at uh, the PGA Tour you hinted at Rochester being, you know, a great golf community. The PGA is going to be out there in Rochester at Oak Hill uh, in just a few weeks. Um, is there any opportunities that you have had or that First Tee has had with collaborating with the PGA Tour? Anything happening at Oak Hill? Any chances where, you know, the community gets to meet the golfers? Anything like that that you guys get to work on? Yeah, so again, um, be, First Tee being involved with the PGA Tour, there's so many different uh, PGA Tour events across the country that the, the local chapters will actually go out and like Rory McIlroy, he's big at the Players' Championship down in Florida, he'll work with, with the First Tee kids out there. Um, there's a couple of potential opportunities that we're working on with the PGA of America that'll be in Rochester this year um, that I can't officially disclose just yet, but Again, too, um, you know, we're really lucky to have the Bills. They've had a really good season and them being out in Buffalo and so many of them are, are really big time golfers. Um, and even Jordan Poyer, who's a safety there, he works with one of our community organizations. Um, so I maybe hinted at a couple of different things, but it, it is really cool to be able to connect people in the community um, with golf. And then even, you know, the, the best names in golf, like Rory McIlroy, like Jordan Speed, they always want to give back. So 
um, a lot of different opportunities um, are being discussed. And for anybody listening today that wants to have the opportunity to learn more about First Tee, maybe to get involved with First Tee, uh, what is the website and the social media that our listeners can go and kind of educate themselves, continue on, uh, on First Tee? Yeah, so if they just go to firsttea.org, um, they will be able to find access to all 150 chapters across the U.S. Uh, again, like you said, First Tea Western New York is a chapter specifically that I work for. But again, if someone's out there, they want to give back to their community and they have an interest in golf, I would definitely encourage them to go to First Tea's website, find the closest chapter near them. And even if it's just going to a school or going to one clinic, you know, they'll be able to, to really realize how much of an impact um, an adult, especially a young adult like ourselves, we relate to today's youth more than I think people realize. So just check out their website and yeah, definitely get involved if, if uh, there's an interest out there. Well, I want to thank you again, Kristen, for taking the time out of your day to sit down with the Sienna community, sharing your Sienna story, your passion for golf and the great work that First Tee is doing. Hopefully I run into you at Oak Hill uh, in a few weeks and we can catch up in person and then maybe get you back on campus sometime after that. Thanks again for everyone listening today. We'll see you next time right here on WBCR 88 for Through the Saints.